Hi guys, welcome to Calculus Crush. Today we're going to be using the definition of the definite integral to solve this integral here. There are rules you can use. It's actually a very simple integral to solve if you know some of the rules, but we're going to pretend that we don't know any of those rules and we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. First thing we need to do is uh, draw this graph just to see what we're up against. It's not necessary to do this, but it's not a bad idea when you have these questions to draw a graph first. y equals x, or our function f of x, is just a straight line like this. So this function here is just x. Now the area from 0 to 1, we don't even need to use integration to do this. I mean, we all know what the area of a triangle is. Area is equal to 1 half base times height. So we can figure that out, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use the definition of the definite integral. So this integral from 0 to 1, x dx, this is equal to a limit as n goes to infinity, the sum i equals 1 to n of f of xi times delta x. Now this is just the definition of the definite integral. So when you see this integral sign, it means this. Now what is f of xi? Well, f of xi is just our function, which is xi. If we had another function, for example, x squared, then f of xi would be xi squared. Now what is delta x? Well, delta x, the general formula is b minus a over n. And in this case, b is 1, because we're integrating, so this here is b, and this is a. So it's just 1 over n. What about xi? What is xi equal to? Well, you can see we're going from 0 to 1, and we're going to divide it into a whole bunch of little pieces, n pieces. And x1, so the first piece, will equal to 0 plus delta x. x2 will equal 0 plus 2 delta x, because we're moving over 2. x3 is 0 plus 3 delta x etc. Get the point? So xi is just 0 plus i delta x, which is just i delta x. So xi is equal to i times delta x, which equals i over n. So now that we have expressions for f of xi and delta x, we can substitute those in and solve this problem. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity. The sum of i equals 1 to n. Now f of xi is just i over n times delta x, which is 1 over n. So we've got an n squared on the bottom, which we can pull out of the summation sign because it doesn't depend on i. And what we're left over with is i equals 1 to n of i. This expression here has a handy little formula, which we're not going to derive in this video. But it's something worth remembering, that if you add up i, n of them, uh, so this would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, the formula for that is n times n plus 1 over 2. So substituting that in, we have the limit as n goes to infinity. Be careful when you're writing these limits here. It's easy to write n goes to 0, because that's how we do it for the differential calculus, the derivative, when we're using the definition of the derivative. The definition of the integral is n going to infinity. And we've got 1 over n squared still here. And then this summation sign reduces to n times n plus 1 
divided by 2. So you can get rid of an n from the top and bottom. What we have is the limit as n goes to infinity, n plus 1 over 2n. Now we take that limit, so we've got infinity on the top and infinity on the bottom. Uh, and those infinities are the same power. They're both to the power of 1. So this just reduces to 1 half. If you have trouble understanding that, then we can do one more step just to make it more clear, where we divide the top and the bottom by the highest power of n. So if we divide the top by n, we get 1 plus 1 over n, and divide the bottom by n, we get 2. Now if we take the limit as n goes to infinity, 1 over infinity is 0, so this guy goes to 0, and all we're left with is 1 half, just as we have up here. Another way to say it is if you have uh, equal powers on the top and bottom, then the limit is just a ratio of leading coefficients, 1 over 2. So there we have it, our final answer. The integral from 0 to 1 of x dx is equal to 1 half. Now let's just confirm that. Since we were only taking the area of a triangle, we didn't even really need to use integral calculus to do that. We've got the base here, which is 1. We've got the height here, which is also 1. So the area is 1 half times 1 times 1, which is 1 half. So we get the th same thing using the uh, area of a triangle. So there you have it. We solved an integral using the definition of a definite integral. We're no we didn't use any kind of anti-differentiation here, just the definition of a definite integral. Limits, summation signs, and that's it. Thanks a lot for watching, you guys. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Until next time.